Thank you very much, and um, one welcome for me as well. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of different to not only see people, you can shake hands and say hi and be tired the day after you had some beer and whatever. Uh, luckily, the meeting is only one day. <laughs> Anyways, so security. Um, we now have, I now have a small security team. We actually three people, including Fredrik, uh, that, that, that started last week. I asked him uh, when he could start, and he said, what about tomorrow? <laughs> that was kind of hectic. And then also Magnus Sandberg. So what are we working on, and what, are we, what have we done? Well, um, we have a, a, a new cool thing, we think, that we call robust chance, robust service. And this is something that we are working together with iTeams, and iTeams is a consulting company that does software uh, development. Uh, they are approximately the same size at NetNode, and um, and they are most well known in the in the community for the ones that are, have developed Upna School Platform, and which is a challenger to the uh, the school pl the, the school service web application thing that they are using here in Stockholm. Um, we are trying to work with, with them both to, uh, for them to learn how NetNode and, and uh, all of us in the room, how we operate and how we run so software services and, and networking. And then we are trying to learn from them how to run open source projects. So the whole idea with Robust Chance is that we are developing a, a framework for minimal level of, to start with, a web service. What should be included to be okay? There are many, many test services out there that tests all different kind of things. How, 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 how do you get, some, which, which means that it's pretty hard to be 100% correct. This is for baseline. And we have developed this in a way so that it's quite easy to add new services. Myself, I'm not a programmer. I don't know much about Docker and orchestration. I wrote, with the help of Daniel, a test for HSTS things in about half an hour. Uh, I included Zone Master as another test. It took me about three hours. Um, and anyone can add tests here in this framework. So the whole idea is that when testing a, a, um, a website or a URL, what is then happening is that it launches one uh, Docker image per test and website. So the test runs in complete isolation, which means that you can have one of the tests running in Al Alpine and another one running in another operating system, whatever. You can, run, you can write a test in, in shell script and just submit it. So this is actually, the architecture is kind of cool. And the whole idea is to, um, to give the ability, or what we are thinking about, because this is a community-driven project, the whole idea is that maybe it is the case that a website should be able to get sort of padlock or some kind of okay, and this is an okay website, or sh name and shame lists, and we can do all different kind of things. But the most important thing is that anyone can also download just the test, and you can run it from your, in your terminal window or whatever. So you don't have to have the whole, the whole framework to be able to run the tests. So go there, Robust Chance by NetNode, it's on GitHub, you can do whatever you want with it and including adding things. So here, for example, I'm running the, the here's, here's the HSTS test. It's just a shell script that on curl. That easy, and you can just run it in Docker your own, on your own and, and uh, test any kind of URL. Um, so how do you contribute? Well, you, you just go to GitHub, you clone the project, and you do a pull request, easy. Uh, BST3 clause, everything. Uh, for on all the code in the project, uh, so new thing in time and frequency. Um, you heard a little bit about NTS, and let me talk a little bit about what we have been doing. This is a typical node that Christian talked about. We have now in Malmö, in Gothenburg, two in Stockholm, Sundsvall, and Luleå. And it includes everything that is needed for frequency generation and, uh, and to discipline the, uh, the cesium clocks and ultimately generate uh, NTP, NTS, and PTP, and also uh, 1 PPS and 10 megahertz, if it is the case that you want that. Um, we have implemented NTP on an FPGA already some time ago. Uh, 
the, uh, the whole idea with FPGA is that the only thing you do from the computer that the FPGA is, is plugged into is to control the card. It's, it's not using the clocking from the, uh, from the PC itself. So we have an external, uh, an external sync for the, uh, for the FP FPGA. And then we have implemented the NTP protocol and also signed NTP uh, in the FPGA. And this, the, we, have use, we are using the uh, VX690 card and um, with 693,000 uh, uh, logic cells, and this is okay to do NTP. And NTP is quite easy because uh, it is fast enough to run it in the FPGA, so you can do this in line rate. Uh, speed the actual NTP, including the signed NTP, we can do that in line rate on this FPGA. And this is what it looks like, and the interesting part is the small card on the top, that is a card that we have developed, uh, which is the only thing that we have done, and that is to be able to get the frequency in and also out to, to measure what's actually happening on the card. Um, so this is the, and then you have uh, four 10 uh, gigabit ports there to the, to the left. So this is the one we use for NTP. So NTS, uh, we try to use, NT, uh, use the same card for NTS. The thing is that the crypto, uh, the AS SIV is a little bit more complicated crypto algorithm. So you can no longer do that in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in wire speed. So, for, for the, so suddenly we need to be able to do the encryption in parallel. And when we want to do things in parallel in FPGA, you need many, many, many more blocks to be able to buffer all the, all the ongoing parallel like threads in the FPGA. So unfortunately, we could only handle about three and a half gigabits per second on this card, uh, which is not what we wanted. We want to be able to actually do 10 gigabits per second. So we need a larger FPGA. Um, we have been looking at the, uh, the Vertex cards because that's a family of cards we like. So we, we started to look at the larger uh, FPGAs and, and we compared a couple of them and we, 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 we um, fell in love with the VU9P card. We bought a couple of, um, of, um, of cards which looks like this, which is the evaluation board. The uh, CPU is, or sorry, the FPGA is under the heatsink there. Um, so the same kind of a new daughter card for the for the frequency to the uh, to the FPGA, but as you might see on this card, it, it's actually pretty big. So um, so we are currently looking at how to actually implement this um, and and put it into into production. We have NTS uh, up and running on this card, uh, but it's not in really in production yet, if you understand what I mean. But we have a, 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 we have we have it up and running, so it's possible to be used. Um, we have written a couple of, uh, of blog posts on best practices, both how to use NTS and NTP as well, because we have seen that people don't really know how to, how to configure uh, NTP in their, in, their, uh, in their host. So we have written a couple of blog posts on that as well. And if it is the case that you also feel that you have something to contribute and have things posted, please come with, not only come with ideas, we're also happy to see that you can also share your experience if you want to, we can help with that. Thank you very much, and now over to Basse.